Hi everyone, I'm Luis Ortega for PCR Online on Every Intervention. We are live from ESC 2023 in Amsterdam and today I have the absolute pressure to host uh, two uh, colleagues and friends from Ferrara, Dr. Simone Briscalga, Dr. Gianluca Campo uh, from the University of Ferrara, Ferrara, Italy. Uh, they presented just today in the late breaking clinical trial session, uh, the breaking results from the FIRE trial uh, who, that were simultaneously published in New England Journal of Medicine. So, uh, Professor Vizcalia, Professor Campo, my congratulations in advance, and I will open the discussion. If you can please uh, wrap up the, the, the rationale of the study, the methods, and the main results, and then we can have a small Q&A for the people for PCR Online. Thank you very much, Luis. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. So yes, we uh, presented, just presented data regarding the five trial patients. Um, we conducted a randomized clinical trial uh, among patients with myocardial infarction with at least 75 years of age, either ST segment or non-ST segment elevation MI with multivessel disease. And basically, patients were randomized to two different revascularization strategies of non-culprit lesions that were culprit-only treatment as a control arm and the physiology-guided complete revascularization as an active arm. What we did was to randomize 1,445 patients to these two strategies. The randomization had to be performed after the treatment of the culprit lesion and the treatment had to be successful. And obviously, one, the major exclusion criteria was the inability of the operator to identify a clear culprit lesion. And this is important because they were both ST segment elevation MI and non-ST segment elevation MI. 65% of the patient had a non stemias uh, clinical presentation and 35% of patients were female, so higher percentage if compared to the prior trials. Mean age was 80, according to the uh, inclusion criteria. And the, may, the primary outcome of the study was a patient-oriented composite endpoint of all-cause death, myocardial infarction, stroke, and ischemia-driven vascularization. And we found a significant reduction in the physiology-guided group, a 27% reduction with a number needed to treat of 19 to reduce the occurrence of one primary endpoint. So clinically significant and statistically significant reduction. And the main secondary outcome was the composite of cardiovascular death and myocardial infarction. And the main secondary outcome was, again, significantly reduced with a P of 0.005, a 36% reduction with a number needed to treat to reduce either cardiovascular death or myocardial infarction of 22. It's important to underline that the rate of adverse event in the five trial population was higher if compared to prior trials. The, the occurrence of the primary outcome in the culprit-only arm was 21% at one year, so very high, and the vast majority of the uh, component of the primary endpoint were hard events, being either death or myocardial infarction. Among the secondary outcomes, what we found was there was no uh, signal of harm due to the the uh, active arm treatment because the safety outcome that was the composite of major bleeding according to bark, stroke, and contrast associated acute kidney injury was not significantly different among the two groups, even if it was numerically a little bit higher in the complete arm, but without reaching statistical significance. And among the other secondary endpoints, it's important to note that both death and cardiovascular death were significantly reduced by physiology guided complete vascularization. It's important to also to stress the fact that we try to obtain a modern revascularization. And so we utilize physiology in order to reduce periprocedural complication in such a complex patient population. And among the physiology tools, it was possible to use also angiography-derived fractional flow reserve. And all the patients were treated with a second-generation drug eluting stent, namely Superflex Cruise, who showed actually very good results in clinical practice and in randomized clinical trials. So these, I would say, are the most important feature of the trial. Okay, okay. Just, just, just breaking results. I, 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 I was very surprised in a positive way, of course, uh, by the results. Uh, changing practice. Uh, and now I think we can open a small Q and A. We will do one, one on one. Uh, one for Professor Campo. One for Gianluca. Uh, sorry for uh, for Simone. Uh, 
I, I will begin. Uh, this is very tailored for the PCR online community, so I will go for some details about the, the you know, interventional part. So you mentioned that uh, it was physically guided, uh, Dr. Vizcaglia. So I understand that there was uh, FFR, there was QFR. Can you give us some details about uh, the proportions? It was a, if the outcomes were kind of different between the, the, the techniques or they were uniform? Yes, absolutely. The wire-based fractional flow reserve was used in 50% of the patient in the complete physiology, complete uh, guided arm, whereas 35% of the patient received angiography-derived FFR in order to indicate and guide revascularization. So they were both used, there were also 15% of patients receiving wire-based uh, resting index. And uh, obviously, we do not have the single data regarding the different strategies. We will have a, a dedicated publication on the topic. But what we saw from the, the major subgroup analysis, and obviously, uh, physiology was one of them, we didn't see any significant interaction among uh, the major subgroups. Okay, okay, great. And uh, Dr. Campo, so we know also that guidelines were changed in, in terms of uh, revascularization or achieving complete revascularization. And I have to be honest that uh, I, I have heard a lot of times that uh, he is too old, just leave him alone. So these results actually break, disrupt that concept. Also, I know that the guidelines were changed. Uh, can you comment on that, uh, how the, how, how the results from uh, from your trial impact or align with the current recommendation from ESC? Yes. Uh, in the trial, it's important to note that we enroll uh, patients with both ST-segment elevation MI and no ST-segment elevation MI with multivessel disease. We know that now in the guideline, physiology-guided complete revascularization has been downgraded from class 1 to class 2A. Uh, in my opinion, this is the consequence of a trial, the flower MI trial, with a negative result for physiology-guided revascularization. But if we apply physiology in the context where physiology can be very helpful, so to reduce unnecessary procedure in patients with a high risk, physiology, as shown by the five trial, did the job. So physiology is really important to focus our attention in the lesion in the vessel requiring revascularization, minimizing additional procedure, additional stent, and the risk of complication. Okay, I, I, this is very insightful. I have a, a further question. Uh, I understand, uh, and we know that recently it was published the BioVas trial, which addressed more or less the topic of complete revascularization, more focus on the timing. I, I don't know if you said uh, in the protocol uh, a strategy about the timing of when complete vascularization should be achieved? Yes, that's a very important point, Luis. So basically the protocol mandated to obtain complete revascularization within index hospitalization. And this was also secondary to the population we were uh, trying to enroll because in older patients, it's difficult, you know, to stage the PCI at two or three months. Maybe you can lose patient and dilute the benefit of complete revascularization. So what we wanted to achieve was complete revascularization within index hospitalization. And that was actually what has been done by the investigators. Okay, just a quick question in this regard. And any any data or more or less the days before, between, sorry, the index event and the index PCI and the stage? Yes. So basically, patient, because we have 65% per, of patients hospitalized for non-STEMI, and most of them received just one procedure to achieve complete revascularization. Whereas for STEMI patient, we, the investigators try to use more and more during the trial angiography-derived FFR to avoid the second procedure in case of a negative physiological assessment. So if you have a look at the number of procedures among the two arms, you have seven, more than 700 procedures in the culprit-only arm, and you have like 925 in the complete arm. And this is actually important because 50% of the patient did not underwent the second procedure because of a negative functional assessment. I mean, that, that's great because I think this is, uh, you know, the, there is, I always say there is academic science and, you know, you have the logistics in the hospital. So 
uh, sometimes you know people is pushing for you know clinicians uh, interventionals they are arguing about if they have to be done in hospital they have to be done uh, as a outpatient uh, procedure so i think i would say that i agree that doing within the hospitalization especially for this population that they will you know 80 years mean you probably will depend on someone bringing you to the hospital and taking care of you so i, I think it makes completely sense that for the scientific and also for the for the human part, I would say. Okay, so question for both of you. So we have the the, the we have the, the senior and the junior, and I would like to ask you uh, both of you if, if what are the plans for the fire? If you are thinking in something similar to the future, which are the plans for? Uh, you have IPDs on the mind. If you have uh, special sub publications on pre specified groups. If you can tease us with a little bit, I will really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> no. Uh, I it's a pleasure to reply to your question because uh, we are working in a program. So we start with the aqua trial, the five trial now. Uh, now Simone is working on the air trial, and in, we are working also in a meta analysis, collecting all the previous uh, randomized clinical trial. Obviously, only the patient aged more than 75 years old, trying to generate a additional evidence in this population and to show the reduction in hard endpoint with complete vascularization. I believe that Simone can describe the most important project, future project that is the AIR trial. Yes, the AIR trial actually is a trial that has uh, started a few months ago, and uh, we are randomizing 1,800 patients with ST segment elevation MI and multivessel disease to either an angiography derived FFR indicated and guided PCI. So, not only telling people treat and not to treat, but also how to treat uh, uh, flow limiting lesion versus angiography, angi angiography guided complete PCI. So, we will try to to do a further step forward in the field, trying to understand whether physiology can actually give us something more if compared to angiography alone. Okay, okay. When you have the rational design, remember you can submit it to every intervention. We will have to have it. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy. It has been a very, very interesting uh, interview. I, I really enjoyed chatting with you, uh, with both of you. You know what? I care about you and, and and you have also been very involved with the PCR online or intervention and we really appreciate your time. Congratulations again to all the team. I know that there's centers in in Italy, but there's also centers in Spain, the centers in Poland also, no? So congratulations to all the fire uh, team investigator because it's a huge, huge uh, addition to the evidence that we have now. And I will say to the persons that are listening to us, uh, PCR online or intervention, keep in tune. So we will have some more interviews. We will keep uh, adding uh, stuff to the website. And we will have, I'm happy that you have a, a nice, nice, very ESC meeting in Amsterdam. Thank you for everything. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh,